Now Photoshop CC 2020 came out last week. Adobe released it with some pretty amazing new tools for making selections. And we're going to be comparing this with the selection tools inside of GIMP. Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the selection tools inside of Photoshop CC 20, 20, and also inside of GIMP 2.10, just doing a very quick comparison. So I'm going to be working with Photoshop and with GIMP 2.10, but also with GIMP 2.8. So we start off inside of GIMP 2.10.14, the very latest version of GIMP. This is the image we're going to be using for all the software packages. And I chose this one because it, it's a pretty easy one to make a selection from. This is really going to be more about the user interface, the usability of the tools and the learning curve that you have to go through to use them. And I think what we're going to find is that Photoshop has some pretty amazing features, the new version of Photoshop. Maybe we'll even look at the quality of the selections as we go through, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about performance and quality later on. We're going to start off in GIMP 2.10.14. What I've done is I've installed this. I've not changed anything. However, I did run a few preliminary tests to see how things would go in each software package. And what I found is that in GIMP 2.10.10, we choose the foreground select tool which I'm going to use in all cases, in both GIMP 2.10 and GIMP 2.8. And we could go ahead and choose Matting Global, which is the default option. But I decided instead to use Matting Levin, which I think actually works a lot better. Matting Global is the one that you get by default. Matting Levin, the default settings, we're going to go with that. I think it works a lot better. It's a lot more reliable. Utilizing the tool, we're going to make a very quick selection around the foreground, like so. So the image I'm working on is about 2K. It's not very large. Once we've made a basic selection, hit enter. And then you get this tool that allows you to draw over the image that you want to select. You can draw the background, which is the color at the back there. You can draw unknown, which is the color in between. So if I made a mistake, I could actually correct it like that. Or you can draw the foreground. We quickly draw the foreground like that. And then once we're ready, we hit preview mask. That took about three seconds. We can then preview this in grayscale. And this is when you can take a look and just judge how good the quality of the selection is. Once we're ready, we hit select. And if we want to, we could go ahead and add a layer mask, choose selection, add, and you've got your selection there. Very easy to do, very quick. Let's go ahead and look at GIMP 2.8. So I've now opened up GIMP 2.8.22, same image. This is the very last version of GIMP 2.8. We'll bring out the same tool. And what you'll see is that it works similarly, but actually, somewhat differently to the later version of GIMP. We make a selection once again, and this time, once we are done, we get the same tool for brushing. And what we do now is that we brush over the foreground. And what you do in GIMP 2.8 is that you've got to cover pretty much all the colors that you find inside of the foreground, and you only get one brush stroke. So as soon as I lift the brush, it will start processing. You can tell there it took about a second. It's really, really quick. There, there are a couple of areas where it's blue and we can just paint over those and see if that fixes the issue. Let's go ahead and hit enter. It's all done. We can go ahead and add a layer mask and then select none. And then we can look at the layer mask. So you can see very, very smooth layer mask. I would say this is significantly better than the one in GIMP 2.10. But like I say, we're not really looking at the quality of the selection in this video. We're looking at more the user interface. And I would actually say that GIMP 2.8 has a slightly more difficult user interface because you only get that one brush stroke to make the selection. You can't add gradually to the brush stroke. And now we move on to Photoshop CC 2020. Here we go to the 
tool that they've added, which is the object selection tool. It is now the default tool in the quick selection menu. And what you do with this bad boy, you just click and drag and draw a rectangle around the object you want to select. A couple of seconds later, it's made the selection. If I wanted to, I could now go to select and mask and then finish that off. You can tell that's a perfect selection. It took about a second. Another technique they have, select, deselect, is the remove background option. To do that, you turn this from a background layer to a normal layer. Then you go to properties and right at the bottom, remove background. About a second later, it's all done. So I would say, if we look at the layer mask, the layer mask is nearly perfect. It's better than the one in GIMP 2.10, better than the one in GIMP 2.8. That is it. That is how simple it is inside of Photoshop. I mean, you don't have much of a learning curve. You just need to remember a couple of steps. So Photoshop uses artificial intelligence to make the selection. It does seem to me to be a somewhat superior method than the ones inside of GIMP. But we're not looking at the quality. Really, to look at quality, you'd need to maybe use more complex selections and see how the software deals with those. So maybe that's going to be a different video that looks at making difficult selections using these tools. But for this one, that's really what I wanted to do. I'm just going to say a little bit about the performance of the different software packages. Photoshop was able to process this say 2K image in a second, GIMP 2.8 in a second, GIMP 2.10 took about three seconds. That's generally speaking what I'm finding. GIMP 2.10 is much slower than the other two software packages. Photoshop, when you get up to about 30 megapixels, Photoshop was able to do the selection in about five seconds. GIMP 2.8 takes longer than that, and with GIMP 2.10, it can take way longer than that. It can take several minutes, and if you don't have sufficient RAM in your system, it can actually go on for tens of minutes. So it's very, very unreliable. Photoshop is amazingly fast, how it actually performs. GIMP 2.8 is pretty fast, and it produces pretty good selections. GIMP 2.10 is completely unreliable. Like I say, I want to make another video looking at maybe larger images, maybe more complex selections and looking at the overall quality of the selections, not just how quick it is to, to make the selection, not just how easy it is to use the software. But in terms of overall use, I found Photoshop much, much easier than the other two software packages. I've been very impressed with what Adobe are doing with artificial intelligence inside of Photoshop. Hope you found some of that useful. Hit the like button if you did. Maybe see you later for more videos. Till then, bye. <laughs>